So we've been talking about sort of qualitative descriptions of solubility, and we need some numbers, some quantitative descriptions. So we need to talk about the, the concentration of a solution, how much solute is in the solution, not just is it more, more than saturated or less than saturated or saturated. So one of the, one of the concentration uh, units that we use is mass percent. Mass percent is like other percentages. It's the part over the whole times 100. So let's see if I can find a place to write this. Percent equals part over whole times 100. So in terms of a solution, the part is the smaller amount. It's the solute we're interested in. The whole is the entire solution. Not the solvent, because that's the other part. The whole thing. So it's the grams, it's the mass percent, so we're talking about grams. The mass of the solute, generally in grams, divided by the mass of the whole solution. The whole solution is the solute plus the solvent. Some problems will give you the mass of solution, some will give you the mass of the solvent, and you have to be aware, and I promise you there will be a, a question on the exam that will try to trick you on this one. There's a lot of things I don't try to trick you on. This is one I always try to trick students, and usually a whole bunch of them fall for it, so it's just, I don't know. I warned you about it, and then I trick you, and it's, I don't know, it shouldn't work, <coughs> but it does. So notice this. The denominator is the mass of the solution, not the mass of the solvent. So let's do an example. Calculate the mass percent of a sucrose solution containing 11.3 grams of sucrose and 412.1 milliliters of water and then in parentheses, assume that the density of water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. So mass percent. So a good place to start is to write down what that means. The mass percent equals the grams of solute divided by the grams of solution times 100. So what is the mass? Well, first of all, there's two things here. There's water and there's sucrose. Which is the solute? It's the one that there's less of. The sucrose, right? 11.3 grams. So that's the mass of the sucrose, the solute, 11.3 grams. What's the mass of the whole solution? Well, hmm, we'll have to think about that a little bit. They gave us a volume of water. What did they do that for? Just to be mean. It's a conspiracy. It really is. 412.1 milliliters. Can we convert that to grams? Yeah. They gave us, they reminded us of the density. So the density, um, we're going to use dimensional analysis to put our units in here. We want grams on top and milliliters on the bottom. Don't just blindly multiply or divide or do whatever you feel like doing. Look at the units. I want the milliliters to cancel and give me grams. Then I look at the density, one gram per milliliter. So one gram per milliliter. So the, the cool thing about water is that the volume in milliliters is the same as the mass in grams. And that's not a coincidence. That's the grams, that's the mass of the solvent. I'm going to move up to the top for a minute here. So, but we need the mass of the solution. Um, grams solution is the mass of all the parts added together. So it's the solvent plus the solute. Did I do that right? 423.4 grams. So that's what goes in the denominator. Times 100. Eleven point three divided by four twenty three point four times one hundred. 
I'm going to round off to three significant figures because 11.3 has three significant figures. And so I'm going to get 2.67%. Any questions? We occasionally got a percent yield that was greater than 100%, meaning that there was some error, a contamination, or you know some mistake, the, the sample was wet or something like that. In mass percents for solutions, if you get over 100%, there's a mistake, and it's one with you. It means you did the calculation wrong. Okay, you cannot have a percentage for a solution that's greater than 100%. In a class of students, you can't have 150% of them be boys, right? So out of 100 students, 150 of them are boys. How does that work? It doesn't work, right? Reminds me of one of my favorite t-shirts. Four out of three people have trouble with fractions. Other commonly used units, parts per hundred, that's the same as percent, right? Percent means per hundred. So parts per hundred is grams per hundred grams, or milliliters per hundred milliliters, or kilograms per hundred kilograms. On these sorts of units, parts per million, parts per anything, the unit that you use doesn't matter as long as they're both the same. So parts per hundred, that's why we use the word parts. Parts per million is grams of solute per million grams of solution. Parts per billion is grams per billion grams. Why do we have these different units? Because some concentrations are very, very small. If you ever look at the, the water report that the city sends, whoever pays for the water at your house, Every, every year they send this report and it's got all these little things on it and some of them are parts per million and some of them are parts per billion. Because some things, you know, if there's two parts per billion of some toxic thing in your water, then we want to know about it. So that's why we have these different sorts of concentration units. We can use these concentration units as conversion factors. And here it's important to recognize that mass percent equals grams per 100 grams. And when you recognize that and write it out this way, then you see, oh, that's a conversion factor. So let's do an example. How much sucrose in grams is contained in 355 milliliters, which is 12 ounces, like a soda can, of a soft drink that contains 11.5% sucrose and it says assume a density of 1.04 grams per milliliter. So we've got, we've got some numbers here. We've got 355 milliliters. That's obviously a volume. It's a volume of what? Is it the solvent, the solute, or the solution? That's the whole solution. Right? That's the water with the sugar and everything else. 11.5% sucrose. Is sucrose the solute or the solvent? It's the solute, right? That's what's dissolved in the water. What does percent mean per 100? So 11%, 11 percent, 11.5 percent means 11.5 grams of solute per 100 grams of solution. And that's, that right there is the piece that most students miss. They go to do a problem like this and they're like, I don't even know what on earth. It's not possible. 11% is 11 grams per 100 grams. Very important to remember that. And what are we trying to find? Grams of sucrose, right, we, which is the solute. We want grams of solute. And then we're also given a density. The density is in parentheses, so that's kind of um, 
just a little helping thing there. So we look at this, and there's two main numbers that are given to us here, 355 milliliters and 11.5 grams per 100 grams. This is something per something. That's a conversion factor. You want to start with the other one that just has a simple unit. You want to start with milliliters and use this as a conversion factor. If you start with this, uh, you may go off on some rabbit trails. So start in the right place. We want to end up with grams of solute. So let's make a path. I'll make the path down here and then we'll finish at the top to be different. So we're starting with milliliters of solution and we want to end up with grams of solute. Well, the percentage relates grams of solution to grams of solute. And we have milliliters. So we need to convert those milliliters to grams of solution and then to grams of solute. We need to use the density to convert to grams. So we'll take 355 milliliters of solution. Typical abbreviation is SOL apostrophe N for solution. And we're going to multiply, uh, we want to multiply by grams and divide by milliliters. We look at the density, it's 1.0, well let's not do that yet because we don't want to I'm going to stay with the pattern. This is grams of solution. And so the milliliters cancel out. And then here, we're going to multiply by grams of solute and divide by grams of solution so that these guys cancel out. The units are going to tell you, do I multiply by 11.5 or do I divide? When you do dimensional analysis, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Get all the units in place and then stick the numbers in. So grams per milliliter, we're told the density is 1.04. 1.04 grams per milliliter. Grams solute per grams of solution. Well, we wrote that out. It was 11.5 grams of solute per 100 grams of solution. Now we have everything in place, we can just get out our calculators. 355 times 1.04 times 11.5 divided by 100. 42, let's round that to three sig figs, 42.5 grams of solute. So there's 42.5 grams of sugar in that can of soda. Any questions?